pals, welcome to Mindful of Madness, a podcast about art and the artistic process. I'm your host, Andrew Ingram, and I've been writing and recording these intros for hours now, so I'm slowly losing the will to live. Speaking of will, uh, my guest this week is Will Louth, a killer drummer who plays in the band's Girl It's Girl, who have an album out on Bandcamp, and hashtag Dorsal Fun. That also includes our very first guest, Soda Pop. Uh, check out those bands. They're both really good. And we talk at length about them in the episode. Of course, I have to talk about my projects, whether I like it or not. I'm sick of it, but we're going to do it anyway. Uh, my album, This Was a Bad Idea, is on Apple Music and Spotify. And hey, if you hit me up on Twitter and Venmo me 10 bucks, I'll even send you an actual compact disc. You remember those? They're shiny. And if you don't have a CD player in your car, you can carve them into ninja stars. Anyway, you can always follow me on social media uh, at Drew Joker Ingram on Twitter and Andrew Ingram88 on Instagram. And if you like the podcast, hit that subscribe button and give us five stars or a thumbs up or however you tell your podcast app. More people should see this. All right. Are you sick of me monologuing? Because I'm sick of me monologuing. Let's get into Mindful of Madness, episode four, with Will Lauer. All right. And uh, welcome to... Mindful of Madness, everybody. Uh, I'm your host, Andrew Ingram, and with me this time around, this is the most professional I've sounded so far on an intro, by the way, and now I'm ruining it. Uh, <laughs> with me uh, today is uh, one of my best friends, uh, best drummer in Colorado Springs that I personally know. There you uh, go. In inflections. <laughs> Um, uh, Will Louth, everybody. Hello, everyone. Yeah. Hey. Hey. Yeah. How's, how's it going? But we, by, by the way, just before we get started, full disclosure, Will and I have been talking for an hour, and it got real deep, and I just turned on the recorder now, so yeah. either so, shit's gonna just feel weird, or we're gonna get real deep again. <laughs> who knows? The conversation yeah. could go either which way. Yeah, so, so if we're just weird and choppy, it's because now we're... We're, we're all on hot mic and awkward. Uh, yeah, and <laughs> about to cry. Yeah, you know? <laughs> things got emotional for a second. But, uh, and, yeah. But, you know, Zac Efron once said, we're all in this together. So. <laughs> oh, yeah, did Zac Efron <laughs> Zac say, Efron did once say he's, that. He's the one, he's he the one who started it. Vanessa Hudgens, Zac Efron, and Corbin Blue. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> I was like, that's such a stupid thing to say. Dude, I say it all. During it's one of my jokes. During a like it's a pandemic. It's one of my jokes. It's one of my personal <laughs> favorites. I say that to everyone that comes to the store. Yeah. Everyone. <laughs> everyone that gives me attitude, I'm like, hey, just like Zac Efron once said, we're all in this together. <laughs> and they just look at me and either sigh really heavily and shake their head because now the song's stuck in their head. Yeah. Or they tell me they love Zac Efron. So it works out either way. Oh, God. Who likes Zac Efron? I don't know. He keeps getting put in stuff. Somebody must like him. I don't know. I don't have anything against him. I don't, but at the same time, is he really all that great? I, I don't think so. No, I don't agree with that. But I don't, like, I could be wrong. <laughs> I mean, everyone's opinions are basically their own, so. Yeah, it, he, I feel like he he falls right into an age bracket where... I don't understand what happened here, so maybe I shouldn't pass judgment on it. Like, because he was part of all those high school musical movies and yeah, stuff. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm pretty sure those came out when I was in college. I was in high school during that Yeah. Time. And I remember, like, some adults being really into high school musical and thinking, what the fuck are you doing? This doesn't seem... To, this isn't for well, us. that falls in the line of Disney lovers and people who love everything Disney. And it was a new musical, so you have that following. who are like, oh, it's a musical. But if you've ever watched those movies, which I recommend that you do not. <laughs> um, okay, they're, they're, good to have that on they're, record. They're, thought we were going to have a fight. They're god-awful. <laughs> yeah. um, but uh, if, if... Just don't. 
<laughs> just, just, just don't. Just don't. Never mind my point. Just Never, don't watch just those don't movies. Just don't watch those movies. But no, Zac Efron is not a very good actor. And then, like, what other movie was he in recently that just brought... Was it, like, he, that he, he did a college couple, neighbor movie or whatever? He did the neighbor's movie. Yeah. He did a couple of things, which I think is a smart move. I think... I don't know if he and Channing Tatum got involved with Rogan uh, and Evans Probably. first. I don't know which of them I'm did, not but sure. but like that was a good move but for hey, them. He graduated. Good for him. Because yeah, <laughs> well, I just mean like those guys. I think they realized that uh, we're we're super we're super handsome guys, and maybe that's not going to be enough for a career anymore. Um, because it what it is when you're very very young. And it, it and in I feel like in the eighties and nineties you could just be good looking, and carry a movie. Yeah. Um, maybe more in the nineties than the eighties, if we're being honest. You know, because at least you had John Cusack oh, fucking Cusack. shit up in the eighties. You know, like he he was really he was really being Cusack in the eighties. But uh, oh man, now he's just crazy and angry for some reason. I mean, who is it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> But I think those two guys realized we can't we can't just do this. We have to find an end somewhere else. And they became friends with like Seth Rogen and got to be got to have really funny stuff written for them. And they could be funny people on their own, maybe. I don't I don't fucking know. We don't know them. But, but but like it it seemed like you got some really smart people to write stuff that made you look really good in those movies. Okay, I see your, I see your point. <laughs> you know, and and it worked for them because it got them more work. They're cool now. Yeah. They're they're not just we're all in this together. Yeah. yeah <laughs> we're all in this together. Exactly. Why are we talking about this? I don't know. We should be talking about drumming. I, uh, I, I segued with my joke, and then you just went yeah, for it. Yeah, no, I did. I, I, I talked too much. Enjoyed. I literally did one of these yesterday and thought, you know what? I think I figured it out. I'm going to be the podcast where I just ask questions, and I let my, uh, my subject just go off in their world and only interject when I have to, and that's going to be my style of interviewing. And then I do this bullshit. I mean, this is fun. Is it? <laughs> It is feels it? like I'm jerking off over here. Oh, you can... just be clear the record. He is not okay. <laughs> and... I, I, yeah, sorry guys. We're gonna make this. The rest of this podcast is about Will, and I'm not gonna be a blowhard unless I am. Uh, oh. So let's talk about drumming. <laughs> uh, Will, you're in two bands right now. Yes, two. Okay, so you've got. Um... I have hashtag Dorsal no. Fun and Girl It's Girl. But uh, pr- more so, hashtag Dorsal One recently, mainly because of the quarantine right. and whatnot. Right. Yes. Yeah, you guys kind of got a practice space, and you're being safe. But We're being you're... safe, and also we all work in retail. So if anyone's really, you know... Going to get it, you're all going to get it anyway. Bet. Yeah. 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 Which That's I true. got tested, I'll... and I don't. Yeah. So yeah. We're good. 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 Yeah. I've, I've been doing fucking... Nothing, man. Yeah. I've been coming out to see see people doing this, and we went over to Charlotte's on Sunday night to help her practice for hosting her bingo show. Ooh, a bingo show. Yeah, it's like a music video bingo. I'm going to have Charlotte on uh, next week. Oh, bingo. Yeah, so I'm excited about that. Um, she, she, uh, Charlotte Rogers, she uh, fronts a local band called, why did I just forget the name of Charlotte's band? Stalemate. Stalemate. Thanks for leaving me out to dry, Will. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> I was taking a puff of my vape. I apologize. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that was not Andrew's It's almost fault. like you're a musician, not a professional podcaster over here. Oh, man, weird. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, check out Stalemate. They have a, an EP on Spotify now. Yes, it's, it's very, really It's good. very, very it's good. It's really good. Uh, yeah, but let's let's talk about you guys. I, I talked to Soto already. I'll probably his uh, episode will come out before yours, I imagine. Um, but you're uh, I've now interviewed two thirds of, uh, no, hashtag, of Dors- dorsal hashtag dorsal fun. I'll yes, have to get puppet on soon. Oh, that'll be a good one. Yeah. Uh, well, I'm just that'll be one where I definitely shut up. <laughs> <laughs> you won't have to. I, it, it'll be fine. Yeah, because his puppet can go on a tear. Puppet will go on a tangent. Yeah. yeah, that that was kind of talking to JB yesterday. Was like, 
because he, he'll nice. just start talking and then I don't have to do anything for yeah, half an hour. Yeah. Mm. Let's talk about drums, he says for the fifth time. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, you're in Dorsal Fun. You're in Girl, It's Girl. Yeah. Uh, your function in both those bands is very different, very I different. would say. Very different, um, So what? let's just start out. What What do you think your style of drumming is? Oh, God. Um, well, I like to call myself a mutt of sorts. Um, my main influences are... Um, Keith Moon of the Who, yeah. Um, John Bonham of Led Zeppelin are my basic main two of why I started. Uh, but if I had to get in depth now, uh, Bonham kind of took a side step because like, I have his power and like he, he was a really good time influence because he's solid. Yeah. Uh, but as far as my drumming now, it's been more freeform and jazzy. So I'd have to give it to like Benny Greb. Uh, he's a great uh, drummer from Germany, or uh, like. Uh, uh, the great Tony Allen, who's an mm-hmm. incredible jazz musician. Uh, he's mainly uh, a more of an African style, uh, really odd rhythmic times. Uh, and he, and basic jazz drumming, uh, when you use the hi-hat to keep time, it's usually on the two and four. And, and this is this is my issue with a lot of jazz centrists, is they if you play out wide, out into like a freeform jazz group, and if you don't play that hi hat on two and four, you will get the worst looks from the <laughs> other. Like they will scold you after. They will like do not come back here and play. Yeah. And like the weirdest thing about that to me is Tony Allen never played like that. He would always play a consistent hi hat pattern, which oddly enough would keep better time because not only are you playing the two and four, you're also playing the one yeah. and three. So it's like if you're playing with the drummer and you're losing that, then yeah. they're not the issue. Typically, okay. Typically, okay. sometimes we do <laughs> well, get do you, carried away. Do, do do you think? Do you think that maybe it's a you know back in the day when kids would write with their left hand, they fucking smack it with a ruler, make them write with oh, their absolutely. right. Do you think it's that kind yes, of thing? Absolutely, because that's how they know how to do it, it's, and you're fucking it up for well, them. Yeah, the, here's yeah. here's my thing about this is <clears throat> mu- drumming and music to me, I. Keith Moon once said, and I've always I've always instilled this in my drumming very much. You, uh, drumming is a musical instrument through and through. When people come to me and they're like, "You're just a drummer. You just bang shit," mm-hmm. and it honestly, you've seen this. You, yeah, I mean, you've, yeah. You've heard my interaction with people, and I know you've been around for people that have told me that, and I get really infuriated. Yeah. Because it's like one, you obviously didn't see what I was doing on stage then, and two that's insulting because like yeah we hit stuff but it's yeah it's how you it's how where you place a stick hit it's how much force you're putting behind that there's a lot of articulation that goes yeah. into what i'm doing and the way i play is more musical and i try to emulate the sound of what's going on from the guitars from the vocals from the bass player and put it behind that kit because yeah. you literally have an orchestral set in front of you Mm -hmm. if you really think about it you have all the odds and ends of being in an orchestral band and you got to think of it like that you can't just go gung-ho and just unless you're in acdc oh i mean phil rudd (laughs) is the godsend of time let's be honest (laughs) but when you kill or i'm sorry when you pay to kill somebody there's there's kind of a line there (laughs) um but uh, no, yeah, there there are definitely a lot of uh, different uh, viewpoints on this. But I personally feel like, um, I mean, that that's even look at the timeline or the, the 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 chronological order of how drumming became what it is today. Uh, it obviously started started in African tribes. You have right. these Afro rhythm rhythms, which in and itself is oh, be- more. Before we go off on this, I just wanted to pay you a compliment mm. what you're talking about with with viewing it as uh, an entire instrument i've never seen you utilize that better than with your when you're with hashtag dorsal fun because you guys are so we're more jammy you're free form yeah. it's- that, that allows me to express that more affluently uh girl it's girl um we're more solid and right that, like i radio friendly more uh we try to keep everything consistent yeah consistency is key with that band i do get a lot of there are a lot of added touches that i get to imply but as far as the bass rhythm i have to keep that solid right right because i that's like your taylor hawkins playing for alanis morissette yeah basically 
And I uh, love Foo Fighters reference. If you don't like it, fuck you. Yeah, exactly. I... Um, Andrea Stone, our vocalist, uh, one of our vocalists and guitar players in Alpha F, uh, who I love them very much. They're wonderful people. Uh, they're that band's really good, uh, but it also makes me stay grounded because right. without that. Who Andrew, the things I would do. <laughs> the things I would do. So, the looks I get sometimes, yeah. and you would, because like, come on, Will. And I'm like, you're right, I'm sorry. Well, it is funny watching you in a in a softer band or even in a enclosed space, because you're a big presence. You're a small guy who's behind the drum kit, but you're still such a big presence on stage. The, I don't even know if it's theatricality or you're just doing it better, like like than than most drummers. I I, I can't tell. Well, it, like because they're, and then watching you in a small space, you are just contained heat that looks like it's about to explode. <laughs> you know, you're you're like I can do more than this. I want to do more than this. If I'm given the chance, I'm gonna do more than oh, this. You know I am. Yeah, but um. You know, Keith Keith Moon will always be my number one. And if you ever see live videos of the Who, he was an animal. Yeah. But it was it was the perfect way to describe it is contained chaos. Yeah. Like I'm contained, but when you watch it, you're just like, what the hell is he doing up there? But it sounds so uniform and so yeah. tight, and you're just like, I can't even explain it. Yeah. And that's who I try to emulate the most in my performance, but. All of the touches I'm doing and everything are more aspects of my recent idols. But right. I still instill that showmanship. The, the ethos. Exactly. The ethos of Keith of Moon. Keith Moon. Um, let's, let's talk about ethos a little bit. That's um, because I feel like this is something that singers and guitarists get talked to a lot, like ad nauseum about, is, you know, what's the, you know, what's what's your... What's your mindset when it comes to music? And you don't see that many interviews with drummers that are talking about the art aspect of the like job. music theory and stuff? Yeah, well, not, not just mu- music theory, but like what music means to you and why it's important to play it for people. Oh man, that's such a heavy question. I know, I know. Uh, I, I tried to. No, dude, I, it's fine. I, we uh, just, just got real deep, real fast. Well, it's gonna get real deep in a second. <laughs> yeah. um, we're gonna go into history of little little loth over here. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so, for all of you who are listening, I'm I'm not a native of Colorado. Uh, I'm from a little place called Warren, Ohio, and it's not the best place in the world. It's actually ranked ninth worst place to live in the entire country currently. Um, but uh, if, if short history lesson, the area in which I'm from was part of the steel belt, uh, which a lot of people don't know what that is, but it's all the steel factories from PA and stuff. Yeah. Uh, and during the 70s, they all got shut down because they just were like, we don't need steel for some weird reason. Yeah. And uh, w- the economy never recovered. For some odd reason, they never reinvigorated the economy. Yeah. It's been really depressed uh, since then. And music in that area has been the quintessential godsend yeah. for that area. Like, some of the best uh, groups for punk and rock have been born there. Yeah. Um, I mean, the Black Keys are from Akron, Ohio. Right. Uh, I love them. I mean, they're not the greatest, but, like, for a two-piece blues band, they write some good music. Yeah, well, and they, you know, they they broke big, honestly. Yeah, I feel like they and did. and you can say whatever you want about more what they do, what they do now yeah. or what but but, but they still a, got out of that depressed area. They're they're a band that worked hard and got famous on their on merits their own. on yeah, from their a basement. merits from their first albums yeah. recorded in a basement. Yeah. Literally. And they sold that shit and they got to work with smart people. Exactly. And it worked out for them and I'm sure there's luck involved like there I mean, always is. Commercials with Lincoln are always a good <laughs> You know. <laughs> yeah, you, And and that Johnny Depp film. Yeah, that great. one kid in but, the mail room. Yeah, exactly. Like rushed into the marketing. I've got a song for I've the next Chevy song. commercial. Exactly. And it's like, "Who are you, kid? I'm Timmy from the mail room, but this is the song." This and is it's the like, shit. "If it's not the song, you're exactly. fired." This is it. Yeah. Um, no, I believe in this. I you believe can in fire this. 
pardon me, Mr. Firestein. You know, they got they got a lot of money. They got a lot yeah. of money for that. But um, no, it's, uh, music has been a really quintessential part of that area, and so is art. We have a lot. Even they really defund the art programs there a lot. Mm-hmm. But the funniest thing about it is all the kids still do it hard. Like right. they they refuse to lay down about it. They're like, no, we're doing this. And it's it's really really wonderful to see so many kids like really still involved in music and art back home. But like when I was a kid, uh, I really didn't have my sister. Honestly, was the musical mm-hmm. person in our family. Like I was the artist. I just drew and painted. Like yeah. they, that's all I did. Ariel, uh, she knows how to play almost every brass instrument there is. She can play violin. She can play guitar. She can play piano. It's ridiculous. And then she just stopped. Was it was it because it was work? No, Errol, there was an issue that she just gave up after a while. She'd be yeah. like, okay, I got this. And she'd be like, okay. Yeah. She'd get bored. And I, from a young age, would just tap on everything, but I never really gave it any thought. Mm-hmm. And then when I got to a certain point, uh, I watched The Who live. Right. <laughs> and I saw Keith, and yeah. I'm like... That's what I want to do. Really? So it wasn't Pete Townsend? Because no. oh. every guitarist talks about The Who and watching Pete Townsend. No. no. <laughs> I'm sorry, yeah. but that windmill holds no bar to watching that maniac swing his arms around I, I would I would agree. Like, I would agree. It holds absolutely. When you talk to Who fans who went and saw that band during the 60s and 70s, yeah. they did not go for Pete Townsend. Yeah. I, I'm sorry. Even when they he was went, smashing hell, shit? They went for John Entwistle, the bass player, and Keith Moon, the drummer. Yeah. Period. I don't know. Yeah. There and, was, and Entwistle was so good, they went to see him, and he did nothing. He just stood there. He just stood there. That was pre. He was the most contained, yeah. amazing bass player yeah. I've ever seen. But and he only got the the skeleton costume after they were already famous, the right? Of white yeah. performance, yeah. Like, poor guy. Poor like, guy. Does he, he died a great way, though. Dude, he he died the most rock and roll death I've Hotel ever fucking room, heard. Pound of cocaine yeah. and hookers. It's, Had a heart attack. Yeah, it's what every rock star from the '80s wanted to happen. Oh, he died in 2001. Yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> no, he was. Yeah, he was what? It, he 59 was, yeah, or something. You in know? a hotel room with yeah. hookers and cocaine. Yeah. Let's get it, John. I'm with <laughs> he's, he's a badass for sure. Oh, uh, like, but on stage, stoic. So stoic. But man, the power. <laughs> yeah. The power behind that, man. Regardless. Yeah. Uh, I actually never had any formal lessons. Really? Uh, my mom never. And I, I, you know, I haven't really talked to my mom in a while. I love her. She'll always be my mom. But, like, she never really gave me the backing yeah, ever to yeah. do that. Like, one one time she bought me drumsticks. Right. That was it. That's right. all I got. She would buy Arrow all these instruments growing up. She yeah. could not afford a drum set for me. Yeah. I got drumsticks, though. Yeah. So the way I taught myself to play, and this is going to sound funny, but, hey, guys, this really works. And I honestly tell everybody this when they start playing. Yeah. Air drum. Yeah, I used to plug my earphones in and listen to the Who and air drum. Wow! And that's how I learned how to drum. <laughs> Did you ever enter one of those drum those air drumming competitions? No, but I would kill it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, um, but and then one Christmas, my mom surprised us by buying us Guitar Hero World Tour. Yeah. And that was the one with the drum kit. Right, which was the only instrument in Guitar Hero that could actually help you learn the instrument. Yeah. So yeah. I broke that thing in three months. Yeah, that's the I, least if, surprising in, thing I've ever in heard. In a week, I was on Expert and would get like almost 100% on every single one of those songs. Yeah. And then eventually, I saved up enough to get my first kid myself. Like, yeah. my mom did not help, and it took a long time. Like, yeah. I've been drumming for, God, what year is it now? 2020. Yeah. 11 years now? Yeah. Yeah. 11 years now. I mean, I was in high school band. Okay, so you were in percussion yes. there? Yes. Um, but it was only for one year. Yeah. And the band director, uh, asked me to join my yeah. junior, like pr- approached me, told me she wanted me to be on drum line. Yeah. And I chose to be a bass drummer. Probably not the best idea for my back. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, but, uh, in order to learn how timing works and read sheet music, that mm-hmm. was the easiest way for me to do it. Yeah. And I taught myself how to read sheet music too. Yeah. Which was... Hard. I I 
attempted in high school, but I didn't. I don't play any instruments, right? right? So drumming sheet music honestly isn't really difficult after you learn. Honestly, if you count, and this is gonna sound really, uh, really um, rude, but I'm not trying to be rude. But if you can count to four, and you can just like, you know, like imagine like it in like spaces, it's right. not hard. Right. It's really not hard. Right. Well, I didn't. I I mainly looked at like uh, lyrical sheet music. Oh, absolutely. Like for, you know, because which I singing is a whole other yeah, beast. Yeah. 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 I think I've seen the sheet music for drumming, and I'm like. I'm sure I could learn this, but... It's a mess. Yeah. I still have some sheet music, I think, in my room. Yeah. From yeah. jazz band. I... <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. jazz band. One day I'm going to learn how to play guitar, but uh, it won't be today. No. You know, I'm I'm only 32. It could still happen. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, finally, when I'm in when I'm in an old folks' home, I'll yeah. I'll figure it out. But my my drumming has transformed a lot. Yeah, like the first band I was in ever was, and you can still find videos of the band on YouTube. Uh, it's All's Well, and that's just A L L apostrophe S. And there's like videos of us at this recording studio. Shout out to Josh Roman. Uh, at Mine Rocket Studios <laughs> in uh, Pittsburgh, and uh, not Pittsburgh, but it's in Pennsylvania, a really nice place. But uh, uh, they do like little. It's segments. The first time anyone said that about Pennsylvania. Yeah, I know. Well, I mean, it's it's honestly. I'm from Ohio. I think well, everywhere okay. else is nice. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyone from Ohio will tell you the same thing. Uh, <laughs> I don't care who you yeah, are. Jesus. I don't care you're like, lying. Like you're... half of our astronauts are in NASA because they hated Ohio. Dude, seriously. Yeah. That's all we dream about is getting out of Ohio. <laughs> we literally nickname it a sinkhole or a black hole because yeah. it always draws you back. It's ridiculous. The hard I'm from time I'm from Indiana. I really can't talk. Oh, you know? God. It's it's not I would rather live in Indiana. It's not any better. It's not really. any better, but have you been to Ohio? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, not a lot. Yeah. But... Uh, you, you do have some really good uh, uh, theme parks. We have one, and I swear to God, everyone's all about Cedar Point, and we're. I love it. it. It's great. It's <laughs> great. Okay, here's my point. It's great for tourists, right? Uh, I wouldn't want to live there. Are sick of it. Yeah. Okay. And if you, if uh, honestly, I, I, I quantify a true Ohioan by, by how much you hate Cedar Point. <laughs> Because if you if you're from Ohio and you're like I fucking love going to Cedar Point, I'm like, where are you from? Where did you come from? And also what? Because like it's so you can't do anything there. Literally, it's so backed up. Like you wait eight hours yeah, to ride the Super. Yeah. Eight hour wait. Aren't times. there like aren't there like weeks where it's just you have to have an Ohio ID? Like isn't that like the first couple weeks before the the park opens? Shit, man, that kind of sucks. They don't yeah. care, dude. I, I agree the wait times at any theme park are kind of why I'm not more into theme parks. Eight hours, like, though. Like, people who are obsessed with Disney World or whatever. Ridiculous. I'm like, it's great once every five I'm years. I'm not paying $600 I, to go to Disney No, because you have to spend some time there. Going for one day doesn't No. You have isn't to go there for at least it. a week. You, it's a lot of money. It's a lot of money for a little. And... Truthfully, while the atmosphere is great, the rides aren't as good as some cheaper options. I would agree. So, and I'm just not that interested in hugging branded characters. Sorry. I mean, that's fair. Like, that's fair. I, I have family who's obsessed with Disney World. Like, they have a timeshare. They go every year. That's, you know, that's a little ridiculous. It, I don't get it. Like, maybe if I lived in Orlando. I would agree with that. Because it's a drive. It's a yeah. drive, and then you just have to pay to get in the park. Yeah. You don't have to pay all those expenses. It, here we are. Here we are tangenting. Just right. tangenting um, and shitting on theme parks. Exactly. Oh, which, Disney. Oh, know, either way. It's not uh, like you can go to the They right own now, everything, anyway. everyone. They literally own everything. Just yeah. remember that. Monopolies yeah. are illegal in this country. Just remember that. Either way. Also, um, they keep changing <laughs> copyright laws so they can keep Mickey Mouse. And it's, and it's fucking up every other, like, publishing industry that's great they're that's they're just really doing it for themselves because they're selfish and it's ruining <sighs> everything else ridiculous either way yeah all well. you guys realize <laughs> you could be writing a batman comic right now oh my god like you should be allowed to write a batman comic it should not be legal for dc to still have the copyright to batman but they keep extending the copyright laws to so they still have batman you could be writing batman right now will I could be. I am Batman. 
Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, man. Sorry. Um, uh, <laughs> you were hoping I was going to do that. Yeah. Uh, but uh, no, All's Well was an indie rock band. So okay. I started, I started like really like the first main real bands that I was heavily influenced by, like in a time where like MGMT and yeah. like Death Cab for Cutie and, um, you know, stuff like that. Right. And then uh, after that band broke up, uh, I kind of just like was on like a hiatus from bands for a solid almost two years i think after that project ended and then uh our good a good friend of ours uh todd zeller uh who's a drummer back home he's fantastic he's in a band called uh terra fractal or wi-fi toaster you can, yeah they're great though <laughs> well, the the highest brown name and the lowest exactly. brown name <laughs> that that shirt we yeah. me and kevin wear that that what yeah it's they're yeah. in the band it's great um but uh he hooked kevin up with me actually yeah and we started jamming in my friend peter's mom's basement and then rossi got involved who are who's our old guitarist for a uh, tie-dye leopard yeah and tie-dye leopard isn't together anymore no uh but just by the by if you don't if you've never listened to tie-dye leopard find their stuff on youtube Do, did you put anything on yeah, Bandcamp? There's, there's uh no but there is a soundcloud account still up yeah yeah check their stuff out it's really really good blues rock um we, we got heavy <laughs> yeah and it's it's two-person blues rock so i mean there are comparisons to be made to the white stripes and the amount of times it, we got yeah. called the black keys i'm sorry man it's okay. I, I know i've done it at least ironically once, enough but... we got more of def leopard jokes than anything really because of tie-dye leopard oh that's true which I makes guess. no sense yeah hey what has nine arms and still sucks andrew def leopard def leopard absolutely yep um but now, obviously, that band's broken up, and I've been, uh, I went from indie rock to rock to blues rock to punk rock to yeah. freeform jazz, <laughs> and like, a girl to girl can't even be quantified by genre, honestly. No, no, every it can't. song on that, we have an EP. Um, girl to girl actually has an EP on I forgot Bandcamp. Shit. Yes, yeah. yes. Um, if you guys go to Bandcamp, just put in Girl It's Girl. Uh, it's only about six bucks for the full album, but it's a live album. It's really nice. It's uh, I would I would say uh, <laughs> I'm trying to describe what it's, it it's is. Just a, it's, it's like R and B, rock, pop. There's a little mix of samba in there. Yeah. Um, some jazz. It it's all over the place. I mean, it it would be an indie pop record yeah i suppose is what you would call it yeah but that's that's a pretty broad <laughs> yeah you just have term. to listen to like it. it's it takes a lot of especially with especially with alpha in the band there oh, are man. there are a lot of vocal uh i would say uh, reaches that yeah. are hard to describe in in one it's a very genre. vocal centrified band <laughs> yeah 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 uh and two lovely ladies who oh, who play amazing who have wonderful voices i it's, those guys make me cry all the time <laughs> yeah. like i can't with those guys sometimes sometimes they're just where at band practice and they just serenade me and i'm just like you guys i love you so much it's just all like yeah. it's terrible yeah this guy's oh, i, miss I really want to get andrea on here i don't oh, think alpha will do it because i've asked alpha to do things before and i don't think she likes doing things for me uh which is fine <laughs> You could but always reach out again. Eh? I, I could always reach mm -hmm. out again. Um, I want to no have harm, no foul, but yeah, I I want to have uh, Andrea on here, but I want to wait until we know when Zodiac's opening back Hope up. Soon, bars are supposed to be allowed to open soon. Yeah, well, well, but I know. Yep, spikes are going up. You know, it's, okay. it's whether that's a good thing or not. It's it's risky. It's risky to go, but I I do want to talk to her pretty soon because i want to talk to her about booking you know and, oh yeah you know in in addition to being a wonderful musician she's probably the best business person i know to talk to about making art and you know making it uh you want to make waves in the city you talk to miss andrea stone that's right i mean she's she's the best i love oh, her oh. <laughs> and um. she's funny and she's nice uh which which helps <laughs> people are rude um yeah pe turns out people in uh any gatekeeper in the world of of art that is nice 
It's someone it's to like, hold on to, like ch- cherish that person. Take a hold of that, never let it go. <laughs> yeah, do you, not. You you keep that relationship fresh. You do. Yeah, you never you do. You do weird things in the bedroom not for that person. Do not that wound. Don't even try to get a wound. <laughs> Actually, that's dirty. You know what? This is a bad time to be making sexual jokes about people in show business. Come on. Don't Andrew. don't give people blowjobs just so you can get booked. Don't no, do that. Don't do that. Don't. And if they ask you to do that, fucking tweet that shit. Like, let us know not to fuck with that person. Absolutely. Get yeah. that shit out. Like, fuck those people. Yeah. I mean, and hopefully it doesn't ruin your career. I know it's very risky. Uh, you, you do, you girl. Uh, I, I, yeah. Uh, yeah. Do, do whatever you think is right. Why, why am I telling you what to do? I am very sorry. Uh, <laughs> man, it's just, uh, just letting that white privilege, white male privilege shine right there it. for a second. I am, in here. I am sorry, guys. Oh, my goodness. I just farted all over the room. I'm I, leaving that in. This is I a teaching to, moment oh, for me. Holy God. Yeah. I don't. I don't think I drank all of it. I'm sorry if I did. Oh my goodness! You stop it. Are we <laughs> gonna have to bring up the Midwestern culture rule again? Mm. No, no, we we got it. All right. I. It is fun hanging out with Midwest boys again because, like, meeting like like there are some dirtbags in the Midwest, oh, but don't... meeting cool people from the Midwest is always. It just makes me feel a little bit like I'm at home. <laughs> Oh, absolutely. You know, like some of that's still instilled in me from childhood. I haven't, I haven't lived in the Midwest well, since I was eighteen at all. But that, so <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we don't want to start a fire during the podcast. Billy Joel. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> no, it's let's not. Stuff. Let's not do that right now. Oh, <laughs> uh, that's my thing, though. Right now. Uh I'm I'm down to talk about Billy Joel, but maybe not. Maybe not right now. Not that song. Ex- oh, that's yeah, not a good song. Yeah. So, how long was Tie Dye Leopard together before you guys came out to Colorado? A year. Yeah. Yeah. It was really. See, here here is how hard I was committed to getting out of that place. Yeah. You ready? I only knew Kevin for maybe six to seven months, and when yeah. he came to band practice one day, and he looked at me and Nick and was like, "My family's in Colorado. I'm leaving." Yeah. Next May, you can come or you can't. It's up to you. Yeah. And I was like, I'm in. I didn't even have to think about it. Yeah. I was all like, yep. I had six hundred dollars in my pocket when I left that place. Wow. That's gutsy. I mean, I didn't care. Yeah. I needed to get out of there. That was the only option I had. Yeah. I was poor. It was there was nothing. It it was it was there was never going to be a better time no. to go. So and there it was, was never... go or don't. I, there was never any growing opportunity there for me. Right. The stuff that I want to go to school for doesn't pay for anything. Right. Music and art. It right. does not pay for jack all unless I'm teaching for it. And I'm like, I'd rather just teach on the side and right. make a little extra cash on the side. And I was like, there's nothing here for me, so I left. Yeah. I mean, I, I got lucky in that regard in that the army just kind of landed me here that's fair right you know like i after high school i did go up to canada for a year and went to school there that was beautiful and it was wonderful it was pacific northwest i was on a tiny little island it was great oh my but uh after that i just you know it was a year-long program and i did the year and needed to come back to the states uh after living in ecuador for you know seven years so most of my watching someone get a chicken you know, thrown at them yeah, yeah i mean it's, i got i got so we'll we'll you can I love hear, that joke. You, yeah you can hear my stand-up for, for that <laughs> stuff but uh you know the um and just I, I went back to indiana and had like went to school for a year didn't fucking go to class you know and there was just nothing for me no, there anymore like and it's not that I hate Indiana. There are things I love about it. It's oh, just, yeah. you know, it, it wasn't going to be a place for me to settle. And then I joined the Army. And as much as that was, like, a very difficult experience for me, and I go back and forth on whether it was a good idea to join or not, even now, you know, the it landed me here in Colorado. And as far as I'm concerned, I can live here till I die. I would agree with that. You know, it's... I do miss the rain and the mist, though. I, I miss the rain. I miss watching thunderstorms roll in. God, you yes. You know? I miss green. I miss the snow. I The snow is different. The snow is different. And, and it doesn't... staying. 
Yeah. I, I hate that I, I well, like... Well, part of that's living in a city. You know, like, like if, if you lived east a bit, it would stick around. But not as much as I would like it to. Yeah, I'm fair. talking for months, but... Like, you remember the winters back home. Yeah. No, I yes, but also, I had to... Well, my parents were in college, or my dad was, was in college, you know, and I was like five. Both our cars broke down, and I had to go to school because... They never closed school. They, they didn't close school. Yeah, they never do. I mean, and, <laughs> and even if my parents had kept me home, yeah. like, they wouldn't be there, so they couldn't leave me there by mm-hmm. myself when I was five. So I had to go to school, and both our cars were broke down. Did you have to walk? Yeah, I had to walk, and it was the coldest winter on I, record. It was there. like negative 20, mm-hmm. you know, negative 30 with wind chill, yeah. and I'm five fucking years old <laughs> walking to Andrew. school. <laughs> Fuck that. I don't miss that shit. I don't miss that at all, but you know what I do miss? Waking up for months and just looking out my window and just seeing white everywhere, and then being able to just like not hear anything because yeah, it's a natural it, sound dampener. It, it does, so it, and it's beautiful. It, it's gorgeous yeah it's really a really a wonderful thing to to witness if you haven't witnessed it well and there's more pine out there so it you know you see snow on branches you know and it stays there that's so nice yeah it is also nice having a break because like here in the springs every once in a while in the winter it'll get up to 55 you know like once or twice it'll get warm again for a week and that's nice that's nice to break up the monotony. I would agree. You know, it's. I also have to stand in the cold for a lot of the year for my job. I do not. So yeah, you know that that kind of sucks. I mean, I don't miss being yeah. in the kitchen. Yeah, but you know, whatever. Yeah. Um. So let's uh let's talk about um. Let's see. We we covered influences. Mm-hmm. You know, we talked about kind of how you guys got here, yep. and and even though Tie Dye Leopard's broken up, you still play with Kevin pretty often. Mm-mm. No, no. I mean, I I see you guys play at least once a month. Maybe mm-hmm. not recently, but uh, we do it. We do it for special occasions, and we do it maybe once every so often. Yeah, but that's it. Yeah, I mean it. I, I get that a band breaking up can be kind of traumatic, you know, and and like, but you guys are still friends, oh, we're, you we're, know, which which is awesome. He's a, like a brother to me. Like yeah. him and his family are literally my family. Like I work with those guys. I go, I was just over there, like I think last week, Kevin and I went on a hike. So, no, oh, we're still really good friends. It's just we don't play music together anymore, yeah. which is sad. Yeah, because man, I do miss. I do miss playing those songs a lot, but... Yeah, well, Kevin's... I, again, we'll have to get him on the show uh, at some point. Great but, songwriter. But great songwriter, great guitarist. Uh, great showman. Great show... Oh, man. The like, first the first time I saw Mike, like, break on him and fall... You know, it, dude, it just he just collapsed. dropped to his knees. Yeah, right with and it. just kept singing Not "Ain't Nothing But a Hound Dog" by Elvis Presley or whoever wrote that song for that Elvis stole. But uh, <laughs> we—I played that with him that day, didn't I? Uh, I remember seeing it at the uh, at uh, Stay Gold. I think he played a guitar right. set one time. That's funny. Uh, at at uh, he goes hard. Yeah, he goes hard. He goes hard. Um, I mean, I'm sure he's. You've seen him do it, like oh, he's you know the, he's he's done it. There have been times where that boy has almost fallen into my kit while I'm playing. Yeah, because he's just romping around and he trips over his cord or something. He's literally fallen through the backstage <laughs> curtain at the Zodiac I during seen that during content. our set. He unplugged his guitar. <laughs> Through the backstage, I still played because the, my my band teacher, Mrs. Dean, uh, Miss Carla Dean, little fifty three year old woman, uh, percussionist, one of the best percussionists of all time in my opinion, uh, used since she's like, don't matter what, do not stop playing. If yeah. someone's messing up, do not stop playing. That's the number one thing you do not do. Also, dynamics, dynamics, dynamics. But that's another topic. But he just. Right through that curtain, yeah. And I just kept going, and next thing you know, you hear the like, click, and then it just goes right back <laughs> out, and just keeps not even losing it. 
It was the funniest thing I've ever seen in my life. Yeah, it's like that boy needs to be famous. He does. Like, like he's he is a front man. He is. You know, he's he he's a a, a little elf like Kurt Cobain, but polite. And you know, very polite, and uh, that, he just needs to get a deal. Oh man! If anyone deserves it, it's Kevin. Yeah, it's it's like it's not even a question of you know really good. He he he's the whole package. Yeah, as far as I'm concerned, yeah, it's, it's everything you'd want to sign. Right yeah, now, it just per- boom. I mean, right, you, you right got the down, songwriting. You got the showmanship. You got the voice. You god got the damn. voice. Like my that. god, and coming from him, it's so novel because he looks like he's gonna be this wafy little. He sounds like he's 35 and smokes a pack of cigarettes every day. <laughs> yeah, he does. <laughs> he's this wafy little 20, indie, indie rock kid. Years old, white you know? little 24 year old. Yeah, looks looks like he's gonna play some iron and wine covers, but he's he's hardcore because he has an electric guitar. And are Muddy Waters, Bob Dylan, <laughs> yeah. and, and, and like, and like this kid. Oh man, oh Kevin. It's I yeah. If 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 anybody from our little artistic scene here gets gets famous, famous, I want it to be Kevin. It's Kevin. Yeah. Uh, as as much as like the the indie rock kid in me is like. You know, if Soda became the greatest, like, the biggest songwriter in the world, I wouldn't be surprised, but it would have to happen on accident. Oh, man. You know, honestly, <laughs> that's segue into that really quick, because, like, we're, we're on the topic of music and everything, but I have never been more um, oh, challenged as a drummer. Yeah. Uh, ever before I've met Puppet and Soda, honestly. Yeah. Like, those two make me have to do things with my body that I have never thought that I could do. <laughs> like, even that little little weird thing I posted on Facebook the other day, it was just one of Soda's guitar looks, but it's just where the little inflection is and the way I play, like I instilled in the very beginning of the conversation, I play musically. So I have to accent that. Yeah. And I'm like, what can I do there? Because it's like this, like, it, I think it's like on the end of two or the beginning of three on the rhythm, which is it's kind of hard to explain but it's like you count one two three four two you know that's the basic four four is the basic time rhythm of most songs so like most drummers play a simple two four like you know you have your simple boom da boom da and just trying to find the three and then come back and on the (laughs) one with soda is so hard sometimes especially when it's like this like and you're yeah. so like, why are you putting a, a, a 16th note grouping in this structure of eighth notes, and then putting it putting it in a and like no no the weirdest spot like the weirdest spot, and then you look at me and you're like, okay, this is it, and I'm like. Do you understand how hard this is for me to do? No, I don't because I don't know what you're saying. But so, I love so, how angry you are. Yeah. About this. So eighth, eighth <laughs> notes. And I'm gonna I'm gonna try to tap it on the table. So eighth notes are this. Yeah. That's an eighth note. And a right. sixteenth note is just That's a sixteenth right. note. So so it is playing doom dum boom doom dum boom doom dum dum boom doom 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 and that's what he's doing. And yeah. I'm like yeah. What was that? <laughs> so my brain is No, he's he's got a very like I pointed this out to him and he was like, Really? But it's like there's something about the added notes he throws in that he accents with that sounds like George Harrison to me. I would agree with that, and it's a little Beckish. A little, yes. A little Beckish. Yes. And yeah. it makes me have to, me being me, I'm like, I have to copy that. Right. So, like, I'm like, all right, I'm going to play a simple rhythm, rhythm rock beat with this. And then on that on that accent, I decided that I was going to do a double on the floor, a double on the rack, and then drag my hand down and hit the snare. And then go, da, 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 really, really lightly. But... <laughs> Where that is in the song and how many times it happens, and it's just like at weird spots. So yeah. I have to like literally stare at Soda and be like, <laughs> now, yeah, and, and just having like even that weird little like fill is just my my brain is like it's here, mm-hmm. but it has to fight every nerve in my body to get my body to move like that. It's just, right. It, it's it, it's it, painful. It breaks everything you know about Absolutely. how it's supposed to work. And, uh, yeah. So so you've got to you've got to combat your own reflexes. And it's hard. Yeah. It's really hard. 
So can you practice that with a recording, or do you have to play with the guys? I can. To... I I completely have it down now. Oh yeah, you've got it. But but like spe- it took me, specifically, it took me twenty one tries. Yeah, I'm not yeah. lying. I counted. <laughs> but. <laughs> I got frustrated. <laughs> how how were you practicing though? Were you practicing with, with them? With soda, yeah, just with okay. soda for yeah. seventeen tries, and then that last recording I did was our eighteen time run through, and I even messed up in the recording, and yeah. I even said it in the post, and I'm like, I messed up, and you see it on my face because I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, and I go for it, and I'm like, yeah. mm, no, it's not there, and I get <laughs> mad at myself, but I still play, but. Um, and then Puppet and I and Soda had practice the other day, and we ran through it at least four to five times because even Puppet trying to learn that yeah was a it was hard yeah it's hard. So on the recordings you guys are doing, uh, is Puppet mainly playing bass or is Puppet mainly playing guitar? Puppet, uh, Puppet's playing a uh, 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 God well a hollow body a Gretsch I believe right now okay so it's got a more vibrato and more open uh tonal quality yeah, to it yeah and so just playing a strap and yeah. so puppet's playing rhythm open chords and just doing his jazz thing right now and Pu- and so does just being soda on top of it yeah so he's yeah. just throwing all those weird intricate like guitar rhythms and like yeah it's really good yeah <laughs> i'm really impressed with what they're coming up with recently i've, I've never seen anyone now that now that he's not on the show i can talk about him without feeling embarrassed but uh I don't know anyone who is as good at pop music that can you know, instill weird things in, into his stuff than soda. than soda. He can be in a band like Hashtag Dorsal Fun, and he can be soda pop music. And soda pop music is this jangly indie rock. I, I don't even know what to call it. a word for it. Yeah, it's, but, but it's so poppy. And it makes me so mad. He is also not famous, just on pure talent alone. I agree. You know, and I, I think we're some of the, uh, we're we're lucky. Yeah, we're honestly really lucky to be involved with the scene that we're in. I think so too. I I, I really do. There are usually there are just like little glimmers. You know, just yeah. Like oh, that's nice. Yeah, that's nice. But there have not been. Honestly, anyone around that I've seen that I've been like, they were okay. Right. Everyone has literally been so individualist and yeah. so themselves about how they present their art that I'm always blown away by yeah. what they do. Well, I, I think a couple cool things are happening in um, art in general right now, specifically because we're we're approaching the generation coming up now that grew up listening to everything yeah because they had spotify or i mean we had napster and you know LimeWire and, and, and limewire yeah. and you know so we could find youtube was just invented when we were growing up right yeah we we could find stuff that we knew we liked but we didn't have access to a larger catalog I- exactly yeah. if you didn't know about it already you had you, you weren't gonna nope. you you had to know Somebody who knew it. Somebody who knew it, yeah. or you had to subscribe to a magazine, which oh, your parents aren't the Columbia pay for that. Record Club, right? If, you know, <laughs> I mean, or you know, I mean, and if you were lucky, you were plugged into a scene. Oh yeah, you know, maybe you had a zine, but I, you know, I grew up in South America, so I didn't have any of that shit. I just would come home during the summers and figure out what my cousins liked. Exactly. You know, I mean. I grew up as the oddball. I'd get made fun of at school because everyone I grew up with around the air was like, dude, did you hear that new T-Pain song? And I'd be like, have you heard The Temptations? And they'd be like, what? And I'm like, you know, The Temptations. I love those. Smokey Robinson. He's great. And they're like, dude, yeah. you're 12. What are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> you, were, you were the record store I nerd I, when dude, you were 12. I I will you, always... you were the you were the guy who was gonna make somebody feel bad about their taste. Exactly. Funny, yeah. funny story though, like there was a radio station I just listened to all the time when I was growing up. It was one oh six point one WBBG and they only played oldies from right. the whole time I was growing up. And then I turned twenty two 
and they sold the radio station to a country radio oh. No, not even good country. No, country just pop, pop. Pop country, And, yeah. like, I was so... I, I have it. I had it saved on my Jeep dashboard. I clicked the button, and that shit came on. I have never cried so hard oh. about music before in my life. The day that station got changed to that, I was like, music's dead to me. Yeah. And I, yeah. <laughs> I just... I couldn't. That was that was part of the reason I got so into it. Like I listened to Motown growing up, and I was really into big band. Like yeah. big band was huge for me. Like freaking uh, Glenn Miller and oh mm-hmm. my god, String of Pearls and yeah. Uh, my dad would play big band records oh all god. the time when I, when we were growing up. Best feeling in the world, coming home, just putting on some big band and just. Making some tea and just sitting down and chilling. <laughs> Making some tea and listening yeah, to Big I Band mean, aren't two things I ever put in the same oh, sentence. Oh, you before. got to. You got yeah. to have a J in your hand. You know? <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's a great feeling. Yeah. Um, hold on, real quick. All right, and we're back. We're. Uh, I think we're gonna start bringing it in for a landing. Uh, I do have like a the last bit of every show. I like to save like 10, 15 minutes to talk about business. Business. Uh, business. All the because business. Because nobody wants to talk about business. Everybody wants to talk about art. We're afraid to talk about monetizing it because then you're not a purist anymore, right? God, I never under- Okay. Frank Zappa had a lot of good points. Yeah. And I understand how the industrialized artistic realm is terrifying and how they control a lot of artistic aspects, but it's still good as a whole to have that because without that backing, a lot of people wouldn't know about your art. Right. And even Frank Zappa with his self-isolationism about the whole aspect still only really got his music out there because the music industry hated him and they got his music out there regardless yeah and i hate saying it like that but it's the truth yeah it's just as a as a punk rocker it feels weird talking about money but that's Kind of like why, or one one of the many reasons to love Ian MacKay, because he was upfront about it, and I think that's that's something I take away from like DC hardcore. Mm-hmm. You know, is an important part of being a DIY musician is treating other DIY musicians or artists. I should say artists because I'm not a musician. I'm a, a, a comedian and a writer but that that punk rock i i think it gets lost in the conversation that punk rock was being equitable between bands far before anybody else was yeah because they understood how the how lucrative it was yeah well i think i and i think it's just a way to be a good person that too you gotta help you other know? people out and like if you're really that terrified of like the business aspect of it make your own business out of it yeah, yeah. I mean, it would be nice if everybody had those skills. If every single, if the artistic mind worked like well in the head, or most most artistic people are not good at business. That's no. what I'm trying to say. I mean, that's and, just, that's just factual. And if if the two were more closely correlated, we wouldn't have these industries working the way they do because artists just want to create and we don't see money signs we see bass notes <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah, we um, see, no. yeah but we, you, you get the point i'm trying to make yeah, yeah. like yeah. if if it would be nice to honestly get paid to do what i do for a living and let's be honest i would love to even just work part-time at my job maybe like 15 hours a week and it, to be able to play shows four nights right and get paid enough to be able to be like i'm cool I'm fine, right. I'm eating, I can pay my bills. And I'd be fine with that. Yeah. But, like, uh, I don't think I would be able to sell my artistic soul for right. a large sum of money because... Oh, I, I could so fast. Well, so here's, fucking here's fast. my point. Like, my, I have a... I, I would be able to, but I have a line. 
Right. Oh, yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I, like, you have. You have to. I. I said that as a joke mainly. Oh yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, you, you have to. There, you have to. There's have a, a line. line. Yes. Um. Like yeah. I'll do what you need me to do. Yeah. I'll try to make it as radio friendly as I possibly can. But at the same time, I am not sacrificing the individualist that I put into my instrument for your monetary needs. Right. It's not happening. Right. You're not going to change a song to make a corporation happen. No, not at all. Yeah. If we, if hashtag Dorsal Fun ever got approached and they're like, okay, guys, I, I know you love Circumcised with a Spoon. <laughs> you have to change the name. Oh, you no. You can keep the no. lyrics, you just have to change the name. Um, <laughs> yeah. That song in itself is almost six minutes long. Yeah. I think four minutes of that. But like most radio songs are two and a half to three minutes long. Right. And if they tried to edit that stuff, even that, I would be like, no. Yeah. No. Because that's ridiculous to me. Right. If Tool, if Tool can produce an album and get their, uh, if can get Numa played continuously mm-hmm. on our rock radio, and that's almost a ten and a half minute song, and they don't right. even cut that song. Right. There's no edit on that song, and it's it's that's true. Then there's no reason why anyone should have to regulate to those demands either. Like it should be, it should be produced the way the artist wants it to. They should have as much freedom as is okay for the public and and there right, there are right. definitely some things well, that i yeah. think like i don't agree with the censorship laws but i shouldn't you shouldn't be like outwardly like causing violence with your lyrics and stuff like that like there there's there's a line right well yeah i mean and that that all has to do with personal taste i agree I, you know there we were talking about i was talking with john brown on the last episode about juggalos because he was a juggalo oh that's that's and interesting he, yeah uh and and very open about he wouldn't be doing comedy today if he wasn't a juggalo I mean, that's fair. 10 years ago you know uh but also talking about how yeah the lyrics are violent and terrible and that's kind of okay because they don't mean it it's they a don't joke it. yeah and they're represents some very important issues in, in the community in in their songs but there are fuckheads who are juggalos too you know i've run That's... into a lot of them back where i'm from so it's okay yeah it's really not yeah. <laughs> well there, there were i had no idea who icp was growing up in ecuador oh I, you know i found out about it much later my, but my some of my family really love that band yeah i don't understand it well, whatever. It's catchy. Yeah. But it's We're just... talking about money here. And, ICP and, guys. And now we're talking about ICP. But what uh, is a juggle though. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I uh um But I no, uh, what's what's kinda on, on like this the smaller scale, what what do you try to monetize now? Like like ex- exceeding our pie in the sky you know this this is the perfect career what 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 are we focusing on here and i've honestly been really thinking about that and i'm glad i'm glad we're talking about this because i've been trying to like think of a way to bring this about but i think like i know a lot of bars around are having open mics and there's a lot of open mics happening but i think it would be cool to get a group of musicians and artists together to actually go into a space actually get a space together get like an actual good sound producer we can like even bill douglas and like mm-hmm. have like roll recordings back it and be like okay we're gonna set up like a bar slash restaurant have live music have a recording set up constantly and videos i'm talking the whole nine yards and have people there go to the shows and then the following week produce that album master mm-hmm. it and then promote the band yeah that was there yeah and we can have even art shows there too, like Tim Furlow could go, yep, and, yep. you know, and like I think that would be a really, really cool <clears throat> idea to like, especially out of this pandemic, to just have a group of people really invest in this, and then like that would build a solid right. like it would be like CBGBs. Yeah, yeah. Well, and I mean, not to butt in with my bullshit, but like you could have the comedy community in on that. No, I mean, you like know, you have yeah. you have a Wednesday night show. And record that's, that, that's, you know, and yeah. sell that. Yeah, yeah I mean... And, and have, like, a little storefront in there, too. And be yeah. like, you want to buy this CD for five bucks, the proceeds go to the band, or to the facility to actually right. help keep, it run. Keep the place running. Yeah, it'd be like a well, do-it-yourself project, but yeah. it would be an actual business. And, you know, the Astros do some of that, right? Yeah. Like, like there, there is or was a space like that, sort of, in the Springs. You know, it's... there. 
there there's a history of punk rock underground shit here here in the springs it's just not everybody's plugged into it i'm not plugged into it i'm not either you know but like somebody like john bueno yeah you know he he grew up going to shows you know that the Astros put on and stuff and now you know now they're still doing stuff so like there are people to talk to about this like we there's there's certainly the possibility of that happening here in I the think springs. it'd be a great idea finding dependable people to be the anchors of that are really what it comes down to because you've got to put a lot of skin in the game to make it happen you really have to believe in it and work very hard to make it work Mm -hmm. you know and there are a lot again not something creative people are especially good good at. at You know, it's you you have to find those two or three people that also have that business brain or at least have been around long enough to gain some skills against their own will, which is kind of where I think I'm at. I'm really trying to to learn things, you know, but I'm not good at it. Yeah. So it takes longer than it would take maybe even just a normal person <laughs> to you know to wow. to set up a business it's it's just really hard to do absolutely um but like it's something i believe in it's you know that that concept of making stuff on our own for ourselves and for our friends is something i really believe in and and i hope we can we can get more of that in our scene when we come out of this yeah you know? more more community less um divicity. Yeah. Di- yeah. It's it's a weird thing cuz I don't know any hostility between scenes here in Colorado Springs, but we do ignore each other. Yeah, we ignore each other too far. Too. Like I remember remember when we used to do comedy ray gun? I oh, miss, I fucking loved it. Dude, I yeah. miss those shows because it would be you got you and Ryan would just go for it. I mean, those were the funniest damn skits ever. Yeah. And then you'd have music. Yeah. And it was great. It was it was it a was lot of really fun. It was really great. It was a lot of fun. And I did the storytelling show. A lot of that was me trying to bring scenes together. It, I wanted and yeah. and I mean I think that was really instilled early in me from I think I've probably talked about the Zodiac and every episode of this. I mean that's that's where I, the first bar I went to was the Zodiac. Yeah, I mean the the Zodiac for a lot of us is the artistic hub of this town it's our home it's it's our home yeah. and it's not that's that's not to say there aren't other cool, cool things places. happening yeah. in other cool places but for our little group of friends because we're, we're friends with we all a lot there. of people yeah and it's all people from the zodiac exactly. it's all people who went there to perform their art you know uh and it's it really sucks that it's closed Oh, God. Very. I, I'm, I. Granted, I've saved quite a bit of money. Yes. Yeah. Um, I mean, you just because the, the business model is great. You know, sign ups at six and show starts at eight. Where else are you gonna go for two hours? Nowhere. I just no. sit there and have my strongbows for <laughs> yeah. two and a half hours. And get get sloshed by showtime. I mean, it's five bucks yeah. for a full can. It's great. Yeah. It's, it's great. It's good stuff. Uh, Zodiac's great. Okay, oh, Zodiac Corner over. Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, but I I think building building the scene uh, or building more ties be- between the different parts of our artistic scene are important. That's why I love the gallery below too. Yeah, you know because I got to do my storytelling show there, uh, which. At some point, I should do again. It's just I, I produce like a really good show there now, and uh, that's a lot more work than I want to do. So starting another one seems a little a, a little much. But it it was a, a really important show to me, and I I know a lot of people liked it. Um, but to those to those comedy ray gun shows, the reason we had to quit was one show would be great, and then five people would come to the next one. And then the next show would be really good, and two people would come to that one. You know, so it it never caught on as hard as it should have. Mm-hmm. Um, I do think we made the Zodiac a lot of money on a couple of those shows, so that's nice. But in the end, it was too inconsistent. And we were doing it every other month 
which which meant it was hard to build that oh, yeah. that base. You know, a, a, we need to have like a weekly show. A weekly show would be would. Or at least Look, a bi monthly. Yeah, show. yeah. I mean, so for comedy, that that does happen. Yeah. Uh, in a couple places, uh, but I would need to be more disciplined if I was going to do it every week. Um, I'm just not there yet as a producer. I, I like my, my monthly show for now, but plus you've got to find a space where it's, it's just more convenient. Yeah. I think that's why Oscar blues works really well. I don't think I've ever been there. Well, uh, they have a, they have an open mic for music on Wednesdays, I think, but on Sunday nights they have, um, they have an open mic and um those guys have really built like a consistent following because they start the show with a feature and headliner and then the open mics after and some people just stay for the show and then leave for the open mic but some people stick around for the open mic especially if the you know headliner was really good yeah. so you know they they figured something something out that worked and it's on it's on Tejon like it's yeah. you know it's uh, I mean it's always uh, like uh, that's the one thing that I've never said is like most of the bands that we've played or that I've played in my career the headliners always last yeah and nobody ever wants to stay out that late right you know what I'm saying like we go on sometimes at midnight yeah and it's like yeah. there's we like hashtag doors of fun has literally played to three people before yeah and that's I mean and there are like 60 people there before we go on right stage, right and then everyone leaves yeah and it's like we're still putting on the best performance we can do, but let's like so yeah you know music music okay let let me ask you this because with comedy playing you have to perform differently to three people yeah. than you play to uh, fifty people mm -hmm. you know you you just do yeah. you know when when you're in a big room with three people in the audience that's a bad scene but you can make it work yeah. Playing to fifty people, a lot easier, a uh, lot easier. But you you can play bigger, you can play more polished. But if there are three people there, you're building a very intimate relationship. Yeah. To, is that different for music? Do you or do you try to hit the same notes I, every time? I'm probably going to answer this question a lot differently than other people would. Okay. Um, for me. And I've actually had this experience, and I've, I've told this to a couple people that I know, because um, they've asked me this question. I've been asked this question before. Uh, Kevin and I once played at the Astros space before it was closed down. Um, yeah. The, uh, I couldn't remember the name. That's yeah. why I said you the know, Astros. <laughs> you, you, know, you know what I'm talking yeah. about. The one that's in the practice space area yeah. and stuff. Um, two people came to that show. Yeah. And Kevin and I played like there were 150 people in that room. Yeah. If if there is even not a single body in that room, yeah, I still uh, give it 100 percent. Like there are at least 30 people in that room because yeah. it to me it doesn't matter. You play you play your heart out. You're yeah. on that stage to present your truest voice in its perfect form, no matter what. Yeah. No matter what, there could literally no one in that goddamn room, and you better play your yeah. heart out. Because yeah. if not, what's the point? Yeah. Do you think working with Kevin has influenced that? Because I think he's very much the same way. I think the reason that Kevin and I have played so well together and used to and got along so well is because we we both had that instilled in us before we even became in contact. Yeah. So so it was just a meeting of the minds. That, Basically. Yeah. So they're like. It's more of it's more of an artistic like expression at that point, and not so much like you came to see us play. We're gonna give you a show. Yeah, yeah. Like we have to. Yeah, yeah. It's like an yeah. oath. <laughs> well, and and I think it's it's an ethos that that really complemented Tie Dye Leopard's style. You know, I think a singer songwriter would probably have a different answer, but you guys were a rock band, rock band. Yeah. You were a, I I mean, in a different in a different world. If you if you guys were ten years younger than or older than you are, you could have been filling stadiums at a very sweet spot for bands like you guys. Like you, 
you could be superstars now if you formed around the same time the White Stripes did. Probably. You know, or or even a little later. You know, but uh, I think that ethos works very, very well for that type of band. And then when you're when you're a uh, when you're Elliot Smith in front of three people, there's a different you there, know there's there's a different, there's a different kind of yeah because yeah. it's because that's that's not about nearly as much about per- persona as this is who I am guys I, you know this is how I feel yeah let me talk to you this is a story right uh, we have a story though but it's more of we're going to melt your faces. Yeah, yeah. And get as close to the stage as you want, but we're going to be still play loud. And oh, yeah. Obnoxious, yeah. But we're going to get through this together. Yeah. I've never been able to see you guys play in a huge space before. I've seen you guys play great shows, but never to, like, the crowd I feel like you Once deserve. we played a house party, yeah. and we were completely surrounded by college kids. Oh, that's awesome. And they went nuts. That's awesome. <laughs> They almost yeah. moshed, if I remember correctly. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> getting college kids to mosh is pretty hard. It was it was They're, a good feeling. Yeah. Um, I feel like uh, I feel like we did the work today. What do you think? I think we got the business done. Yeah, we as got the you, business as, done. As you once said. So uh, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm going to get canceled for saying that, I think. Oh, no. It's fair. It's fair. Uh, uh, <laughs> But uh, thanks for being on, man. Oh, that was uh, a lot of fun. What do people need to check out from you? Well, I would say um, go ahead and go on Facebook and look up hashtag Dorsal Fun and Girl to Girl. Give us a like. Yeah. Um, I recently actually am going to start a drum channel myself. I'm going to try to get a computer and do drum covers and nice. stuff. Yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. Um, but yeah, just check out our music. Um, uh, we actually hashtag Dorsal Fun released an, a live EP the other day. You can find oh, is it, it out? Because Soda was talking about it. I didn't oh know yeah, it was pa- out. Yeah, uh, Puppet uh, put it on our band page. It's just garbage gravy. Nice. It's yeah, it's a mess. Uh, yeah, as the title implies, but it's it's a lot of fun. It's definitely what the band in, embodies. Yeah, I'm just gonna leave it at that. Yeah, you, there's um, a real hippie spirit to uh, <laughs> to what you guys are doing. To what we're doing because <laughs> everything's always different with those guys. And yeah. it's always fun. It's always a new adventure with them. And then obviously Bandcamp, girl, it's girl, six bucks or whatever you want to pay, whatever you yeah. have, it's fine. Um, you know, uh, give it a give it a listen. Yeah. You you probably enjoy yeah. it. Let's see. I I'm trying to just dis- I tried to describe dorsal fun with soda, and I think I failed. You guys are We're eclectic jazz, yeah. jazz pop. You guys are like what Les Claypool would be if he were honest with himself. <laughs> oh my god, that that was perfect. <laughs> I I love you for that. Okay, that I, I think that's what you guys are doing. I like we're if, not as dirty. No, <laughs> you no, know? no. He's got this twang to him. We we are yeah. we're cleaner. <laughs> yeah. Except with the lyrics. <laughs> well, right, yeah. Circumcised with a spoon, everybody. I mean, that's not even. Out. That's really not even about actual getting circumcised with a spoon. Yeah. It's about love. <laughs> that it, makes sense. That makes sense. It's literally about. It's comparing love as a, if you can talk to puppet about it. I'm going to try to, to try to explain it the best way I can. But the way he explains it is, it's like taking arsenic by the spoonful. Oh man. That's basically the premise of the song. Nice. nice. I remember everyone. Dolphins are evil. Dolphins are evil. That's yeah. kind of the the mission statement of hashtag dorsal fun. Sorry, dolphin. We're just friends. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. All right. I did all my bullshit at the beginning. So uh, thanks for listening, guys. We'll, Thank you, guys. Yeah, we'll catch you next time. I think next up is Charlotte Rogers, but you betcha. You know, I'm recording a bunch of these ahead of time, so you never know. I might mix them up just to be fun. Oh, it'd be funny. Oh, the, the, now sarcastic asshole Will is, is showing through. <laughs> now that it's over, you're being a dick. I see how this oh, is. Oh, you take it easy on that. I love you. It's okay. All right. I love you, too. <laughs> I love you, too, listener. But you, not really. Not. Uh, we don't know you. I, I don't know you. It would be dishonest to say I love you. I do appreciate you, though, very we, much. We appreciate you very yeah. much, yes. Yeah, so thank, thanks a lot, guys. Uh, Sorry for rambling. I'm not. 
Yeah, uh, that, was, that was a good conversation. Yeah, yeah that was fun. Uh, <laughs> goodbye. <laughs>